Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Sunday, November 19th. I'm your host, Tom Orr. The game against Michigan in six days. We only have to talk about one game, Tony Gerderman. Because much like I think for a lot of Ohio State fans, there is only one game this season. Ohio State 11-0. They beat Minnesota 37-3 in the horseshoe. Michigan also 11-0. They beat Maryland in a closer than expected 31-24 game in College Park. But now there is only, much like a Highlander, Tony, there is only one. It is the game. It is coming up on Saturday. I guess we are sort of contractually obligated to talk about the Minnesota game for at least a couple minutes okay. because it is a thing we spent most of the day watching. Ohio State, it really just kind of – it felt real spring gamey, honestly, in the first half. Not a lot happened. They went down the field, scored right away, and then that was kind of it for a while. They ended up with a 13 nothing halftime lead, and then right after halftime, they exploded, and all of a sudden it went from – 13 nothing to 27 nothing in what felt like the blink of an eye. Yeah, 17 points in that third quarter and 14 right away and effectively ending any hope of a disaster that would have had to have been Ohio State's doing. Mm-hmm. At that point, you score those two touchdowns in the third quarter and you've protected yourself against yourself. And not that Ohio State was playing that poorly, but yeah, a relatively easy win. And now the preseason is officially over the 11 game preseason that we have to deal with every year. And now the regular season can begin to see if Ohio state will be the undefeated team that they want to be. But you know, Kyle McCord does enough. The the running game is, I don't want to say fantastic, but there's fantastic parts of Travion Henderson, Dallin Hayden getting in there. We didn't touch on this in on the Buckeye weekly podcast from last night. But Ryan Day talking about uh, why are you playing Dallin Hayden? And he's like, well, that was this was his third game. He's got one more game. And then he confirmed for everybody the postseason games don't count this year either towards the red shirty. Oh, interesting. So now I don't know if he's wrong about that <laughs> because there was a question about that, you know, because I think that was how it was last year. They decided to allow the, the postseason to not count. And so it sounds like they may be doing that. Good now, as an appeasement to the coaches, because of the transfer portal, you're losing guys. So this is a way for them to, gosh, get what you know, six games out of a guy, seven games out of a guy, and not have it count. I think that's uh, pretty fantastic. So that that just leads to the mm-hmm. the method to the madness of yeah. why isn't Dallin Hayden playing? Because they were holding him for this. Well, and I don't really want to fall down this particular rabbit hole, but we talked for. You know, a two and a half hour post game show, including uh, the Mark and Devin and the post game with Ryan Day and all that kind of stuff. And we didn't touch on this. So we'll touch on this real quickly. When Dallin Hayden's in there, I mean, the first the first run he was in there, it just went boom, 15 yards. Yep. And it just he is, I think, much more similar to Travion Henderson in terms of style of back and the fact that they have seemingly found something with Travion Henderson. And, you know, I mm. Seemingly found something as me hedging way too much because Travion Henderson has had two 200 yeah. yard total offense games and then had 146 yards of rushing and uh, 26 yards of receiving. So, you know, 172 yards of total offense against Minnesota. They have very clearly not just found something, they, they, have, uh, they have had something with Travion <laughs> Henderson for quite a while. It feels like it kind of got something with Dallin Hayden, too. And he, you know, if he fits what Travion Henderson does schematically, because, you know, Chip Trainum is a very good running back. Chip Trainum brings a lot of stuff. He's not the same type of running back as, as Travion Henderson. If you have someone like Dallin Hayden, you can maybe stay in the flow of what you're yeah. doing and what you're doing well right now. That feels like that could be a pretty big deal. Yeah, I think we're going to talk about that more in the week. But definitely where you don't have to change the change gears, you don't have to grind the gears, you just keep going with what you've been doing. and. You're looking at Travion Henderson's game by game after missing those that month between Notre Dame and Wisconsin, he's rushed for 100 yards in every game, including the Notre Notre Dame game, except for the Michigan State game, which that was just a choice. Yes, yeah. Yeah. we've decided to hold you out of mm-hmm. the second half of this game, or else he'd be on a five game stretch of 100 yard games heading into the biggest game of the year, playing his best ball heading into the biggest game of the year. Someone else that we didn't talk about a ton on the postgame show, but who was the leading receiver for the Buckeyes after playing 
barely at all. You know, you, you saw little mm -hmm. bits and pieces of Emeka Abuka over the last month or so, but he, he sat out a bunch, was not 100% healthy, has not been 100% healthy since hurting that ankle. He looked pretty darn good. Five catches, 83 yards, five catches on eight targets, leading receiver for the Buckeyes. Having that second receiver, and you know we're going to talk about Michigan secondary and matchups and all that kind of stuff. Will Johnson on one side of the field as an outside corner, you, you, I think you feel very good about as your Michigan. Emeka Ibuka in the slot, presumably going up against Mike Sainer still. I mean, th those are a couple heavyweight matchups that we could be looking at uh, next next week. Mike Sainer still had two picks yeah. on uh, Saturday against Maryland. You know, those are Michigan's two best defensive backs. So I would expect Ohio State to try to get one of those guys away from those yes. guys. Get oh, them yeah. matched up with Josh Wallace, who gave up some catches. But, you know, Will Johnson gave up a, a nearly a touchdown catch. It was a touchdown catch, but then it was taken back to the one-foot line. So it's not like he's been perfect, but he is a very, very, very good cornerback. So they'll find ways to get their top two guys off of him. But also, they're not going to go to those guys just if, oh, Will, Johnson, Will Johnson's on Marvin, so we need to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They're going to find those guys wherever, and Kyle McCord's going to take what is given to him, depending on the coverage, as is his job as the quarterback. But, yeah, eight targets. I wonder when the last time Mecca had eight targets, maybe Notre Dame, I guess, probably. Probably. That was his last there. like real live, um, really heavily involved in the offense, I think almost. So on the defensive side of the ball, very, very – no Tommy Eichenberg. That was – you know, that, that was – he was a game-time decision. Ohio State held him out, just a precautionary thing. Ryan Day made it sound like it was not something Tommy Eichenberg was totally on board with, which is not real surprising, but held him out as a precautionary thing. It sounds like everyone who is out, other than Lathan Ransom – right. They are expecting everyone else who is out, including Mike Hall, to be back next week. But without Mike Hall, without Tommy Eichenberg, it was kind of the Jack Sawyer game. It was, you know, he had he had uh, six tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, a sack, a forced fumble, and, and he had a huge game. Tyleek Williams had a huge game. JT Tui Melowau, you know, not a huge game statistically, but had a fumble recovery, ran it back, looked like it was going to maybe be run back for a touchdown, didn't quite get there. This is not a great Minnesota offensive line by any means. But, man, did Ohio State's defensive line look like what a really good off defensive line would do against a not very good offensive line. Yeah, against an offensive line with some issues. And so Sawyer finishes with six tackles. One of his tackles was a no gain. Very, very close to mm -hmm. being another tackle for loss. The other tackle was one yard down the field. Obviously, he's close to the line of scrimmage, so you expect most of his tackles to be there. But very close to having all six of his tackles occur, occur in the backfield. And you know, with Michigan's offensive line showing some weaknesses, uh, particularly the tackles, particularly Carson um, Barnard. Barnard, who was uh, exposed a little bit against Penn State and I think was also part of the reason why Michigan ran the ball every time mm -hmm. again in the second half against Penn State, protecting some of the weaknesses there. And so that's going to be something that Ohio State, uh, it will be interesting to see how they attack it, how Michigan counters that attack, because I think they're going to have to provide some protection. And I do expect a, a handful of max protect from Michigan to help those corners, to help that play action game, to help uh, J.J. McCarthy find some large windows, because right now it seems like he needs some bigger windows. He has not been, you know, Kyle McCord has been, has made some NFL throws yeah. this year. JJ McCarthy has made some NFL throws this year, but uh, you know, you go back to last year, this time last year, we're talking about the fact that, boy, I don't think Michigan's going to be able to throw the ball downfield because you hadn't yeah. seen it all year. And then you saw it, but it was only <laughs> because Ohio state had some just incredible busts, like mm -hmm. historic busts in the secondary. If the, you know, the, the secondary play this year has obviously been substantially better than it was last year. If it's if those are tighter windows, how does JJ McCarthy, you know, respond to that? How does Kyle McCord respond to that? Kyle McCord had a good, not incredible, but good game against Minnesota. Twenty for thirty, sixty-seven percent completions, two hundred and twelve yards, two touchdowns, no picks. 
no picks is kind of, I think, the, the biggest thing on that on that stat line. But 67% completions, 212 yards, solid day. There was not, you know, the one huge play that really skewed everything. The longest play all day was 26 yards. Had completions of 13, 14, 16, 20, 26. So, you know, working that sort of intermediate game pretty effectively. He feels like he has gotten better enough that you could see him winning the game against Michigan, you know, that, that Kyle McCord could be the guy who, you know, leads the drive down right. the field to win the game. Well, I mean, have we seen him do that before? It's been, we, it's been a while though, Tom, it's been the, you know, back to September, but we have seen him and we have seen him make every throw you need to make. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of doing those all in the same game. And you don't need to be perfect to beat anybody, you know, I, C.J. Stroud was not perfect last year and did enough to beat Georgia. You just have to be good enough in the right moments and hit the throws that are available to you, put the ball in the right pot, uh, spot for the receivers to make plays that are available to them. What you can't do is throw it behind a guy on third down to keep a drive alive. Mm -hmm. like, I, you know, doesn't almost doesn't matter what you do on first down as long as you make up for it on third down uh, for a quarterback. So if they're completing those passes on third down, just – but also, Tom, it's better to stay ahead of the chains. I'm just going to tell you that. Mm, but, maybe if true. <laughs> but we, we, what we've seen from Kyle McCord is enough to beat what we have seen from Michigan. Yeah. It just has to happen. Yeah, and J.J. McCarthy is good enough to beat yes. Ohio State. This is, this is two quarterbacks who are good but not flawless, not incredible, not perfect. This is, I mean – there are a thousand different ways in which this game is going to be so close and so evenly matched and come down to like the one mistake or the one mm -hmm. thing it's I, I'm even, I'm just, my head is spinning in terms of what direction we want to go right now. How about this one? Rather than start, you know, going position by position, let's just talk about the last two weeks, the last two weeks, Ohio state has played, you know, the kind of competition that Michigan was playing for the first nine weeks of the season. Yeah. Michigan has been playing the last two weeks probably the two best opponents they've played all season at Penn state and then home uh, and then at Maryland. How has your view of this game changed over the last two weeks, setting aside all the off field stuff? Cause yeah. boy, lots has changed in that realm as well. Just on field watching Ohio state play against Michigan state and Minnesota on field, watching Michigan play at Penn state and Maryland. How has your view of what the Ohio state Michigan game might be? How has that changed? Well, we've finally gotten to see the real Michigan, I think, which is what we've been waiting to see. And the real Michigan is still pretty darn good because obviously Penn State is just a pain to play. You've got to be spot on to blow them out. And so you're not you're not gonna be spot on and they'll they'll hang around. But this is not this is not a juggernaut. This is a very good Michigan team, number three in the nation, I think, in the, the CFP polls, but yeah, because I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do in terms of who am I picking in this game. I didn't really think about picking Ohio State until maybe this weekend, where it's like, well, you know what, you might want to, you might want to start looking at this a little more closely. And not that Ohio State couldn't win prior to this week, but this is the the last two weeks. I've seen areas where Michigan can be beaten because they've faced opponents who this isn't 10 out of 10 times that Michigan's going to beat these guys mm -hmm. because both teams gave Michigan multiple points, mul multiple scores. Maryland did it. Penn State did it. With more consistent quarterback play, more consistent coaching, clearly Michigan can be beaten. I will also say those two games came on the road in November, mm -hmm. and you take any kind of win you can on the road in November – in the Big Ten, and playing at home is a much different thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, the Buckeyes will be on the road uh, this weekend up in Ann Arbor. Noon kickoff, Fox, you probably know all that. It's basically the same thing every year. Uh, something else that will be the same, we will be there. We will be covering the game uh, as the uh, Buckeyes play up in Ann Arbor. It's going to be quite a week just to sort of give you a sense of what to expect for this week. Uh, Tony put out a call for questions on his Twitter account, just twitter.com slash Tony Gerdeman. Uh, you can find that if you want to ask us some questions there or just, you know, at us on Twitter and uh, 
We'll try and add those to those shows. We are probably going to do a lot of listener questions uh, in the next day or two. We're going to try and load you up in terms of the beginning of the week so you have a lot of stuff because we know a lot of people are traveling this week and we want to give you as much stuff in it as early as we can. Uh, but we will have stuff all throughout the week. And then uh, Friday, we will be up in Michigan. We'll have the uh, planning a live show Friday night, uh, probably answering your questions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, previewing the game, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of stuff to talk about. Uh, it is one of the mass, most fascinating matchups on the field that I can remember. And then there's all the off the field stuff. Oh, and right? boy, boy, there's going to be some stuff to talk about there as well. I saw someone on our live show ask us, so what are you expecting to happen in in the uh, <laughs> the scandal stuff this week? And it's just like, you tell me, buddy. I have, I'm prepared for just about anything. Uh, in terms of on-field results this weekend, I'm prepared for just about anything in terms of what happens off the field this week. I would just ask Pete Thamel, Ross Dellinger, leave Thursday alone. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I would imagine they won't put anything on Thursday because that's not going to be a great day for internet traffic. But there are no guarantees at this <laughs> point other than you can get great coverage of Ohio State football at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Tony and Kevin and I cover the team. Mark covering recruiting, a very busy uh, month heading into early signing day now. Uh, that is just about a month away. So if you have thought, you know, hey, I've, I've thought about supporting these guys, maybe joining BuckeyeHuddle.com, try for a month. Boy, would this be a great time to do it because I think there's going to be some stuff to talk yeah. about this week in advance of this game. And uh, then uh, who knows what happens after that. Ohio State could play as many as three additional games after that. Plus you got early signing day coming in about a month. There's going to be a lot of recruiting news as well. Lots of uh, X's and O's talk with Ross Fulton and uh, Mickey and Devin, all of our X's and O's gurus making you a smarter football fan, all on the Huddle Board, which is member exclusive. The Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby's Columbus. That is all at PuckeyeHuddle.com. And of course, if you are watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and make sure you hit that bell. All three of those things, it will take like five seconds total. Uh, it will make your life so much better because there's going to be so much stuff coming at you this week. You're not going to want to miss it. So thumbs up subscribe bell easy oh, that's all that's all you got to do that will do it for us today thank you guys all for joining us have a great day we'll talk to you tomorrow